Hi everybody, I'm Mike, and uh, I'm going to talk today about making leather canteens, leather bottles. I was recently reading a thread on the Pathfinder School Learning Center regarding jackware, and David asked if everybody made it, and there were a couple people that say, yeah, I made it, I use it, etc., etc., and we got into a little bit of a discussion on tips, tricks, etc., and I offered to make a uh, short video on it. So this is going to be it. Uh, first thing that I'm going to talk about with this, really, really very important to use vegetable tan leather. Um, you can get this from a lot of different suppliers, you know, Tandy, uh, Breton's Village. Uh, I got this particular piece from Springfield Leather. Um, it is a I want to say seven to eight ounce vegetable tan leather. That's a pretty good size to use, I think. Um, this is a uh, import double shoulder, so I have plenty of room to uh, to make a lot of bottles if I wanted to. But I'm going to do, use it for other things: holsters, knife sheaths, etc. Because I've, some of you who may have seen my posts on the Learning Center of Seeing that I've been making a lot of knives lately, and well, I need some some place to carry them. Um, so the first thing you want to do is draft a pattern. I like to use um, Manila folders because it's very easy. You know, it comes pre-creased. It's very easy to get a nice symmetrical shape with it. Um, this particular pattern is what I use to make a forty-ounce bottle, uh, which is after I'm done stuffing it, etc., etc., and stretching it out and it dries and I seal it, it's right around 40 ounces. When you're going to place your pattern on the leather, you really want to look at it and see, you want to try to avoid any holes, any big stretch marks, etc., but you really are looking for the way the grain runs, because leather, like wood, has a grain. And you have to take that into account when you're making something, particularly something like this that's going to stretch, because if you don't take that take it into account and have the grain oriented the same way on the pieces, it's going to stretch unevenly and it's going to be way out of balance, very asymmetrical, and it's going to look like crap. And we don't want that. I don't anyway. So what I like to do, if I have a piece like this, I'll just orient it along one edge, right like so. And then uh, trace around it with a pencil. Then you have the shape marked on the leather. I don't know how well you can see that. Another very important thing, don't just simply set the pattern right beside it. If you do that, sure, your leather pieces will be the same, but your bottle won't be symmetrical because even though I've tried my very best to make this pattern as even and as symmetrical as I possibly can, I may have may have been flawed, you know. So what you want to make sure you do is flip it over so that you have a left side and a right side. Then do the same thing, trace your pattern out. <clears throat> there I have my left side, my right side, traced onto my leather. Next thing I have to do is cut. If you're going to cut, when you cut your leather, you want to have something uh, firm yet sacrificial underneath. So I'm going to use a piece of plywood so I don't mar my table up. And you want to use a really good sharp knife. Uh, you can use a head knife. If you have a big enough pair, you can use a pair of shears. Um, 
use a, an X-Acto knife, a carpet knife, a utility knife, um, a sharp pocket knife. I'm just going to be happening to use one of the knives I recently made. Um, so this thing's really sharp, so it should cut through it pretty good. However, also understand that you don't need to cut through it all in one pass. You can score it and then keep going around it, keep scoring it deeper and deeper, and eventually you'll get through. So we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and do that right now. You want to be as careful as you can to cut on your lines. That's why I say you don't have to cut all the way through in one pass. Because if you try to do that, you're a lot less likely to be as accurate as you want to be with this. At least I am. I, I, I can't say about you guys. Now I'm sure there are a ton of leather workers out there who are going to comment and tell me how I'm doing this wrong. And that's okay. That doesn't bother me in the slightest. A, I am by no means a master at this. I think I do pretty well in uh, the uh, reenactment society I'm a part of. I have gained recognition and awards for my leather work, but that and, uh, you know, two bucks will buy you a cup of coffee, right? So I am by no means a master in this. Um, this is just the way I do it. It's not necessarily the way to do it. You know, if you ask a uh, hundred people how to do something, you'll probably get a hundred different answers. And that's, that's how it's going to be with this. So this is a way. It may not even be the best way. As a matter of fact, it probably isn't the best way. But, you know, that's how that goes. So there I've made my first pass. And I've also kicked the tripod out of, out of the way. But there you can see I've made my first pass. And I'm just about through the leather. So you know, I tend to just go ahead and make another pass. Which should get me pretty much all the way. You can feel when the tip of your knife bites into the plywood. So it's easier to follow the second time around because you already have that uh, path worn in the, you know, cut in the leather. That isn't to say that a good sharp knife won't just go right through and go wherever it wants. So you still have to be careful. But, uh, yeah, you can see this is pretty much coming apart. I just have to free it. So there we had the first part cut out. I'm going to go ahead and cut the other one and get back with you. Okay, now I have both my halves cut out and I need to do some gluing. So what I tend to do is just make a little mark around the edges so I have a bit of a guide as to how deep I want the glue to go. I just kind of guesstimate it. I do not put a mark along here because that's where the mouth of the bottle is going to be. I don't want to glue that shut. That would kind of make it hard to drink from, right? So I then take a little bit of glue and I'm using Elmer's wood glue. It's non-toxic and it, uh, it works pretty well for this application. So I'll take and run a little bit of glue, a thin bit, along the edges here, and then smear it. I'll do that on both sides, and then uh, I'll show you what I do after that.
All right. Now that I have those two pieces smeared with glue, just gonna stick them together. Um, I don't use the glue as a structural element in this to uh, hold, you know, to, to hold the bottle together whenever it, it, it's, it's done. What I'm using the glue for is to hold the bottle together while I mark my stitch lines and do my stitching and, and whatnot. Um, you know, I'm not trying, like I said, to use glue to hold the thing together permanently. It's just a temporary measure. So sometimes you'll get it to where it gaps open like this. So what I like to do, put a board on it and put a little bit of weight on it. And, uh, and I'll wait about an hour or so and show you what's next.